Welcome to the West Side Barbell Podcast. Today we're joined by the Newark Boys. I appreciate everyone turn up today, guys. And we'll get straight into it. I think the easiest way is the start. How did you all end up at West Side Barbell? I think I was 19, 18 or 19 years old. And mm-hmm. I know we've talked about that in an earlier podcast. So I'll leave some of that stuff out. Um, so I kind of came up and uh, trained up here for... Like I said, about 14 years is how many years I put in up here. So um, I kind of learned for a while. And like I said, I didn't, I watched my you know, P's and Q's. I, I just listened and took all the training in for the first year I was at Westside. And just, uh, I was with the four o'clock crew most of the time. Um, trained with Gritter and Bob, which I know they've been on here and gave their two cents and brought up some old memories for me to listen to those guys talk. So um, they, they, they brought me on. I, I, was basically uh, cut my teeth under those two guys. Um, you know, I still was around Lou and everything, and I benched mm-hmm. in the mornings and things like that. But my four o'clock crew was basically me. So, and then again, I brought Joe. You know, met Joe. I've known Joe since high school. Met him. You know, brought him up the West Side um, after you know training with him for a little bit. I knew he had the balls to train up here. Um, and then I really wasn't going to bring anybody else up. I mean, I, I mean that's just you know. I knew there were certain spots on Demarest. We had such a small place. You know, I wasn't going to bring anybody in that I didn't think at least could <laughs> have the balls to train with us, yep. okay? So um, brought Joe in. Um, like I said, probably, what, about a year, Joe, you were in? Well, you came up, how long were we? Probably about a year before we brought these guys? Uh, yeah, probably not. Yeah, maybe a year. Yeah, maybe maybe eight months or so. Um, we need a couple more people. Gritter had asked uh, if we could, you know, if we do anybody, you know, and... Uh, I've been helping these guys, um, I don't know how many months. Um, I would literally train at four o'clock, drive back to Newark and train those guys. And would pretty much do the same exact exercise that we did at four o'clock with Gritter and Bob. I'd go back and train these guys. Um, and I busted their balls just as much as th- they did to us up here. Yeah. Um, so, that, that, so that's kind of how I got into the, you know, the whole West Side thing, taking them back down, training these guys, and then they end up you know, I'll let them to explain a little more. Um, they're funny because they saw us at Demarest training and then they looked for us for a long time. They couldn't find <laughs> us. They'd run into my brother-in-law at a, a TSC to buy chains or quality farm and fleet, some farm store, I don't know, uh, buy chains. And then that's how these two kind of met him. And then they were looking for us trying to find this gym in Newark. Yeah. And then uh, that's kind of how we all kind of got together and then we benched together for a while before we even brought them up here. So uh, me and Joe kind of, we bust the balls, man. You know, just because, you know, we were, if you're going to take somebody up here, man, you, you, had, to, you had to bring it. Yeah. So um, they actually went well beyond what I thought they could ever do. I mean, if they talk about some of their numbers, they, they, they did some numbers um, that, that, that I didn't even think they could reach. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm proud of them. And... Uh, you know, I'm glad that everything's worked out for them, and, and, and they made me proud at the end. So, um, you know, I don't know if there's anything Joe wants to add in about how we first met with these guys. Oh, I just I came in right uh, at like two thousand, like right before two thousand, two thousand early two thousand. Josh brought me up. I had been brought up here once before by Don Dameron. He brought me up when I was right out right in my senior year of high school, and I realized then that this place was insane. Yeah. <laughs> and I then I was like, I even told Lou when Lou had introduced himself and talked to me, I said, yeah, I don't know if I'm ready for something like this quite yet. And he he made the joke to me. He said, I, I got a feeling I think you might be back. And I was like, eh, I don't know about right now. And then <laughs> um, I did a couple meets. I started training, doing some stuff. And then Josh was going to do a push-pull meet. So we started training deadlift stuff together. And I start, he started getting ideas from the guys up here. And we was kind of doing stuff at home. And I did my first meet uh, at 242 down in West Virginia. And I didn't know that Josh had talked to anybody up here about me coming here, perm- like coming up to train. And it was basically like my tryout, you know, yeah. to see if I, and then uh, the meet you was- did good enough. Yeah. And then they, uh, uh, Gritter talked to me a lot, yelled at me a lot at that meet. And I thought, man, this guy is insane. And then he brought me, and then right after that meet, I came up, started training. And then I, he said they graduated in 02, so I hadn't been here probably maybe a year. I mean, and then it was? Oh, they wow. started coming. 
Because I think I've been Newark with us. In 98, somewhere in there, is when I think I started up here. I can't remember. I'm not quite sure. 97, yeah. 98 is when I came up here. So and then when they I came out and started benching with us and stuff, it was, you know, it was our bench group in Newark was pretty, I mean, we were yeah. always pretty wild. It yeah, wasn't. It was, you know, well, yeah, I'm sure we'll get into some of them stories that, yeah, it was pretty intense bench oh, yeah. workouts. And then we finally decided to see if we could bring them up here and, Cause I don't know how big you were then. You wasn't <laughs> real big. Two, uh, two forty two. Yeah. When you first came to us, yeah, when I first, yeah, oh, two forty two. Okay. <laughs> What'd you end up? I just battling? remember the three hundred pounds act. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, that. yeah. Started off two forty two. Okay, yeah. well, I didn't know you were three hundred eight. Yeah, I was already bit of three hundred. I mean, he was enormous. He was oh, like, yeah, ridiculously big. Yeah, three seventy. He was three seventy. Yeah, yeah. And he could have a scale that could weigh me back. Well, I was telling him about Timmy was going to. Uh, college out in West Virginia and all that, and, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, came up to Damaris and hop on the scale, Tim, hop on there, see how much you weigh. Hops on there and just shuts off. Air, yeah. air, air starts smoking. <laughs> so and, you know, well, go- when I went to college in West yeah. Virginia, you had that student pass for the cafeteria, and there, it wasn't like you get one tray. I wanted to be big and strong, so yeah. you just kept going back until they kicked you out. <laughs> you were you were as big as a fucking the power rack. I mean, I remember when we yeah. first oh, brought man. you in, and we, yeah. you know, you're getting inside, getting inside of the power rack, and these, you know, that's what we benched out of for years. And uh, he was as, I mean, I'm not shitting you, as big and as wide as a power rack. That's the how VHS big he was. tapes, even the monolift. Yeah, I remember. You just took up the money. It was amazing. He was a how massive, yep. massive yeah. kid when we worked with him at first. I mean, well, what did you? What do you know? How was the biggest you got? No, um, I know I weighed in at a meet, and I think it was the first meet I benched seven hundred in up in Avon. Mm-hmm. They actually weighed me in at four seventy five at that meet, and I know it was bigger than that. Yeah. Jeez, he was a so ma- he was massive. massive. Yeah, you're almost massive. five hundred. Yeah. I can point, remember um, oh, Lou. We went bit, to a man. meet, and he said, "I want you two big fuckers to walk in." first <laughs> and i'm like okay you know I, I was probably about 360 and you know he's in there damn near 500 pounds you know i think it made lou remind him of the old you know where he had all yeah. the great big dudes and I, I think he liked that with us so i think that's the reason he yeah. took to us newark guys i was watching a video uh not too long ago remember when he pulled like i think it was 8 10 out in uh pennsylvania mm-hmm. that was my first oh, day he had that pool. big old bushy beard well, huge beard he was, yeah. dude, he had Norman. Yeah. Then Joey's right next to him, you know, dwarfs Joey. And it was just, he was just <laughs> massive. Well, there's a, a squat one where Joe's back spot. The only thing you see is two hands. <laughs> you see my side. feet? Yeah. And yeah. then my hands. That's all you can see. You see my feet at the bottom because he was so wide stance. Because, uh, well, Mike Miller was supposed to back spot you. Yeah. yeah. And he was arguing with one of his lifters and he bailed on the back spot. And Gritter's like, and he's like, well, I can't. So he sent me in. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? I mean, yeah. this is. If this man goes down with 10, well, I think it was like 10.30 or something, you were squatting at the time. No, that, well, I think it was only, I was only in the nines at that time. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was pretty, I can remember the time we were in Cleveland. Well, I don't know if it's Cleveland. Maybe Yvonne, I don't remember. When you passed out. That was, that was Cleveland. Avon. And that I caught Cleveland. you. It was like the Side spotters had no clue going on, so I'm holding 900 pounds, at least on his back, 500 pounds of him, and I'm holding him, and I'm yelling, hey, you sons of bitches. Somebody's got to help me here. We're going down. Finally, the side spotters are like, oh, oh God, let's help him up. Because he's asleep. He's asleep. He's out. He's out. He, yeah. uh, we got in the hole and good night. And I'm just trying to hold him going, I hope somebody helps me here because we're all going down in a second. Oh, yeah. I don't remember a whole lot about that squad except I remember going down. And then at some point I get up and the floor's upside down. And then I ask them if I got it or not. And they're like, no, you passed out. Yeah. So, yes. That, so, that was kind of like how you guys came in. Like I said, Joe and... Yeah. What was it like for you guys? So we have you guys another podcast, mm-hmm. but Zach and Tim, what was it feeling like to get into Westside? Was was that a thing you wanted to achieve? Well, it was. About it? I mean, Zach and I. So we'll start where we came from. We both went to high school together, like Josh and Joe here. So kind of similar. Tall guy, short guy, <laughs> similarity there. Yeah. Um, we uh, there was a gym in the town we With grew the, up that, that we started training together at during yep. the summers when we didn't have school and whatnot, and we both really hit it off training together, became pretty much best friends at that point. And then in high school, in the off seasons, there was some powerlifting meets we got a chance to go to, and we just we were infatuated with powerlifting. And I remember going to uh, like Barnes and Noble and books, and then looking at those powerlifting USA's every week and reading the articles about these guys and those were our heroes so oh we read everything everything we can get our hands on i remember yeah 
uh, and we, Leaf uh, Fitness going on there, printing off you know every article. Yeah, that's reading how we everything. found out about Man, We were, and then watching the uh, the library had the old. Oh yeah, we used to go to the Columbus Library VHS, and check out all VHS. the old West Side tapes, like oh, the old man. school ones, and we just like sit in this house and just watch them over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> that was badass, man. I think we knew from we're getting into this gym one way or another. Yeah, and I mean, like we, we uh, had to, we had to be there. We cold called Louie one time because he put his number at the like his real phone number at the end of yeah. every article, and we yeah. wanted to come see the gym and buy T-shirts and whatnot and talk to him about the strength and conditioning field that we wanted to get into, and then he. Uh, Pretty much told us that's not a real thing, <laughs> which <laughs> was pretty awesome. But like the moment we walked in that gym, Lou is all about getting strong. We're like, this is where we need to be. And like, we show up and I'm wearing a button up shirt and pants. And I don't remember what he was wearing, but Bob's like, you come to Westside, you got to work out. So Louie had us on like a stability ball doing the time dumbbell presses. Yeah. And I'm like a 17 or 18 year old kid with no real training at all just what we've done and he's got me with 50 pound dumbbells doing dumbbell presses for five minutes and i think i'm gonna die yeah. um so fast forward a bit and zach is going to tractor supply in a west side shirt that we got from dave's website to buy some chains for us and runs into uh jim dannison yeah. which i ran into him and uh he's oh you train at west side and all that no no uh, just getting some chains just me and my buddy you know we're powerlifting all that he's like, oh well you know i Train with a bunch of guys, uh, train at Westside out here in Newark, and he, I'm half listening to him, half looking at the chains, you know, and uh, he told me the name of the gym, and I end up, uh, I forgot w what Jimmy said. So I get back to, and tell Tim all about it, and he's like, oh, dude, what, what gym was it? Where, where, where's it at? We got to go there. I was like, fuck, I can't remember. And uh, so it literally took like a month. Yeah, we spent every Wednesday, <laughs> every night Wednesday for like a for week, like a month, canvassing all of Newark, looking for what ended up being called the gym. <laughs> like we literally <laughs> went to every other single gym, walked in like looking for big dudes, asking like, ask, hey, "Is yeah. there any real big strong guys that train here?" Like people probably thought we were idiots. <laughs> no, mate, go, walking around. Go try over here, and then we go over there. Yeah. Oh no, go try over here. Another dry hole, and then we finally found him. And I remember walking in, and I see Josh. It's just the biggest human being I've ever seen, and that's. Like, I don't, I've never realized how big I actually was, even when I was 500 pounds. But yeah. this dude was like, to me, he was like eight feet tall, like 900 pounds, like the biggest, strongest looking dude I've ever had. He's got a blue cutoff West Side shirt on and a bandana and just staring at us like, what are these kids doing here? Like, get out of my face. That's funny because I remember, I remember telling him, I remember exactly what Joey was wearing. First time we walked in, first time, because he walked right in. And look straight down, and, was, and you guys were like back off in this little area back in the back. I could just see Joey he had a red West Side shirt on, has beanie he always wore. He's just pacing, just pacing back. I was like, "Fuck yeah, we found it!" <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had no idea. It was like yeah, that. but like to answer your question, what was it like? Like kids have heroes growing up. Like the West Side guys were our heroes, so to get to go and train with them was was like a dream come true that most people never get to realize. Yeah. And then to actually learn from them and excel was even, it's really hard to put into words, but it was some of the best years of our lives I'd, I'd gather. Not only did they, you know, Josh and you know, Joey, they, they were real good mentors of like what it means to be West Side. And, you know, I remember when Josh was wanting to get us up there, you know, he made it very clear, you know. You know, don't embarrass me first off. You know, I'm getting you guys in there, <laughs> right? He didn't I'm put getting, it quite that nice, right, but... Right. <laughs> you guys are getting the, I, I'm getting you guys in there, but you know, it's just what West Side means. You know, you're, you know, you got SWAT at six o'clock on uh, Friday, showing up there at six, ain't gonna cut it. You need to get there early. Uh, you guys aren't squatting first. You're gonna be changing the plates, changing the box sides. You're gonna be running the rack. You know, you need to warm up. Uh, we had our, it was all about wearing our stripes, man. We, you know, you couldn't well, that's, miss, that's couldn't how miss I came up. So yeah. I, wanted to, I yeah. wasn't gonna embarrass, you know, wasn't gonna embarrass the name of West Side. You know, yeah, wow. I I earned mine, you know, just from being there for years. That's how I earned mine. Now I wasn't gonna bring these little punk asses up there, right. and then they're not gonna do what you know what I had to cut through. So you know, I know me and Joey, you know, we're gonna make these kids work. You know, so that's what we did. We just say, hey, you're gonna you're gonna do exactly. You there ain't gonna be nothing short. You know, getting a cupcake around here. It's gonna yeah. be balls to the wall. You're gonna be changing plates. You're gonna, you know, whatever we need, we need chains put on. You know, different bands, whatever we had to do. You're doing it for us. You're down here right now. Yeah. You know, you, you you ain't up here. You're down here. You're gonna have to work your way up there. 
So really you know. taught us respect, man. You got re- respect West Side. You know, no one's almost like, no one's above West Side. You know what I mean? And just getting there, you earn your stripes and missing workouts. Wasn't you know? No. Couldn't ever miss <laughs> a workout. No, you couldn't miss workouts. You couldn't miss meets. You know, we'd got we'd be going. I feel like we went to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You know, three times a year. A year you know, had to be there and help. And you know, was it like the first time you guys met Louis? Yeah, I guess it was. Well, it was the first time. Yeah, when, it was that first we day we went up. there. It was, it was really interesting because you you read about this guy that you think is this really famous celebrity type guy, and he's and he is, but he's very personable. Yeah, like he's very interested in making everybody stronger. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. Like he came, we came in there, and he's just starting to show us all new kinds of stuff, and he don't know us for any, anybody in the world. He don't owe us anything. He's trying to make us better without even knowing who we are, and that's pretty much the way it was the entire time I knew Lou. So it was it was really awesome to to meet that guy. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Lou was he talked to anybody. I mean, yeah. I'd see him, you know, at meets, just be talking to some guy. Doesn't even look like he lifts weights. Just to, just because he liked to explain what's going on the platform. So that was, the, I, you know, with, with him, I mean, that, it was always there, so. But it must've been an advantage for you guys to have these guys put you through the paces, then go into Westside compared oh. to people who may have just turned up and, mm-hmm. cause at least you had Westside, well, you knew what it was. You knew what the culture was, the environment was. So do you think that's what helped you guys get in and be a part of it from uh, the start? Oh there? yeah. And, and, uh, Every, uh, uh, what was it? Wednesday workouts were every bit as intense or more intense than any West Side workout. Wednesday yeah. night, Wednesday nights were, you know, that was Josh and, you know, and Joey's. Yeah. That was their, that was their day, buddy. Yeah. They, I were, guess they were, you know, big benchers, you know, and Josh, you know, had the music cranking. He was always loud, getting, every, getting in everybody's ass, man. You had to work hard. You had to put out, you know, it was, I'd be, I, you know, nervous. And, you know, I was just a young 17-year-old kid driving up there, and I'd be, you know, butterflies <laughs> going, man, Josh, you know, big, intimidating dude, man. It was... It was you guys make me sound like a monster. Oh, well, we were was, terrified. Man. He <laughs> was, he, he was the fireball, man. And Joey, Joey, and Joey, man. Joey would just be pacing, wouldn't be talking to anybody. <laughs> and, we, had, uh, we had some intense training, and like I said... Strong but, as hell, too, yeah. man. I remember seeing both of these dudes bench well over 600 raw. You know, and it's just crazy when I first started. And uh, 315, like 315 in high school, you were doing something. You know what I mean? Yeah. You felt pretty, uh, you know, pretty strong. But sh- like Joey benched what, 6, 605, 610 raw. You, you know, 242. You 605 when we came to you guys. Josh, 620. I mean, it was insane. I've yeah, never seen like, anything like it. You know, what? When, uh, when you guys were training at Westside, did you guys kind of click up and like, oh, we're we're at West Side, but we're Newark in West Side. Did you guys kind of gravitate around each other training, or did you mingle with everyone else in the gym? Yeah, you, you kind of had to mingle. Yeah, because yeah. you get that in there. Something you had no choice. You didn't have to. Yeah. Well, Gritter wasn't going to let you do that. Yeah. First of all, no. Like you get in there, and it's like the first sergeant's walking around, giving everybody orders, and that dude wouldn't let you just be in your own clique. You were no. part of the team, or you weren't. Yeah, because oh, yeah. I think you guys were. Probably some of the last guys that actually came to Demarest. I think yeah. you, you guys yeah. are probably the last that I can remember that came to Demarest uh, before we made the move over here. Yep. We were probably only there for probably six or seven months. I would was think. it that long? I think it was almost a year, maybe. Was it? Yeah, it was a little bit we did of time. A couple of I remember through that Demarest location. Oh, okay. The, the, you know that that was it. The Demarest location, man. That, <laughs> that, that was, gym was awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, that was great. It was small, right? It was just yeah. one one unit. Yeah, it was probably as big as this. To right there, yeah. Like 800 yeah, square feet, awesome. I, think. I mean, that's <laughs> it, unless you were there, you don't know what it was like. I mean, honest yeah. to God, you did, uh, we can sit here and talk about it, but it can never explain it in words on what walking into that place. Oh, it's intimidating, man. You know, people talk about walking meccas there. here and meccas there, and this is the mecca of whatever Midwest. This is the mecca here. West Side was mecca of powerlifting. Yeah, it ain't no bullshit. You did when you walked in there. It was a whole different feeling. I know as soon as I walked in there, it was a feeling. I know Joe's talked about it. When you walked in that place, there was almost eerie, like, shit. You know, either you're more man up or you might as well turn around and walk back out. Yeah. Adios, brother. Yeah. So, you know, I know. It was was even just nerve wracking just driving to the place. I know Zach and I probably a handful of times will pull over and throw up on the way just because we're so nervous that what we were getting ourselves into. 
But on the way back, man, you're like, I can't wait for the next. Can't wait to get back out there, man. It was awesome, you know. What was more nervous? Was it nervous to perform or what was the workout was going to be or was the environment? What made you so nervous about The environment it? and all of the characters that were in there because it was, <laughs> when people say intense, it's hard to really quantify that. And especially for two basically children to go in with all these men that might want to rip your head off right. if you look at them. The best part was us splitting into teams and competing against yeah. each other. That was the fun part for yeah. me. It was like, you know, we'd break off into teams in our own group, you know, yeah. and then we would compete for pizza. That was yeah. always the, you know, on Demers, you had Demers pizza, pizza, pizza and man. Coke or whatever they had. And it was every every Monday, that's what it was. Yep. It was, you know, and it that was fun. I mean, that was... Because you didn't want to be the weak link of your team that caused you to lose pizza, so yeah. it was, you know. <laughs> and then we even did the we did the breakfast thing on Sunday mornings because we benched. So we oh, did yeah. the, yep. every yep. Sunday we did breakfast just like we yep. do up here. Like we'd all meet, you know, we all meet every Sunday. It didn't matter. You've been out the night before and you right. get in at three a.m. Yeah, you, you're, yeah. you're going to yeah. breakfast and you showed up to breakfast. You went to the gym. We did we did the same type of stuff because I was just that's how we came up, you know. Um, so you know these guys, you know, we had to get them. <laughs> We wanted them the same mentality. Yeah. So, um, was there any rivalry or any competition between the different groups between like the morning crew and the four p.m. crew? Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, there, there was, and there was also Lou always trying to steal us. Yeah, and I remember because I remember you guys. We all split up. Well, you know, that was, some of you guys went to the morning. I went probably, to late. I went to night. And, uh, you know, because it worked out for you guys on Fridays because you guys could squat in the mornings. Yeah. I couldn't get there because of my job, so I squatted at night. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't yeah, know. I always felt bad about morning, that. Too, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I yeah. felt bad about that for Josh because it kind of split our group up. But in the end, it was probably better for Zach, Joe, and I because our squats just yeah. went crazy. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, they, they were all 1,000-pound squatters, and <clears throat> I was 900. So, yeah, no what, uh, for jumping. What made that go up? Was there anything in particular? Environment. The the morning crew was, it was you got Chuck Vogelpohl in there first of all, which <laughs> I don't think anybody needs to understand how intense that guy was, and he was he was like gritter on a whole other level in there. But I remember when I first started there at Chuck Story, I would to part of paying my dues was even though it wasn't my crew to train with, I was going to drive to the gym and watch and learn. And Lou said, "Why don't you come in and help out and run the rack?" And I would uh, run the rack for Chuck and all this for like a year. Chuck never said a single word to me for that whole year until IPA Nationals in 2003 when I got my elite. He looked over at me and said, good job, big. That's it. That's all he said. And I was <laughs> big, like, at that big point, big I knew I'd, I'd probably made it. I was probably going to be all right at this gym when I got that guy to say something to me. Yeah. What was it like when it came to meet day? Oh, meet day oh, was dude, easy, we were the- man. You had, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, didn't have to, you didn't have to worry about anything. I mean, we'd always... You'd have Joey wrapping knees. I mean, Josh would be calling weights for you. I mean, spot you, back spot you, you know. You didn't have to worry about nothing. That's one thing. We were, I know the Newark crew, but, man, we were solid. Um, Always We there. never had to worry about help. They never had to sit there and like, who's going to hand out to me, man? Who's going to wrap my knee? We were set, and we always had Gritter there, too. Yeah. And, and Bob helped us, you know. Yeah. We, we always had those guys that would kind of – Gritter, a lot of times, was, for some of us, was – because Lou was helping so many people, yeah. Grit would, had, would set his eyes on us a little bit just to make sure everything was okay. Okay, the, the, those guys are you got plenty of help. They're wrapped. They're they're ready to go. You know their attempts are set. Well, so, he would make all them guys from the barn come and help. Yeah, he would just make yeah. people like come his and crew help. guys that yeah. lived at his house. He would make them come help us. Yeah, so and we didn't know, even know them. I mean, they were and they were, he'd make them come help us. It was but, hilarious. Yeah, you know, we yeah. we came in as a as West Side team. We were just a the Newark crew or the oh, Newark yeah. boys or whatever it was. All of that stuff with helping each other at the gym, running the rack, getting the crew through the workout, and then going to every single meet, even if you didn't have the money to go, you found a way to go. Yeah. It all reinforced that the the team thing, it's it's not about me, it's about these guys too, and I have to be there for them for the success of everybody to go up. And you probably learned a lot too by, by handling, wrapping, watching, loading plates, Oh like, yeah, that's an education itself that you can't really get anywhere else. And you get more in tune with each person's personality and what they need at a meet. Like there's guys like Josh who need you to get into his face, and Zach who really needs you to hit him to get amped up. But then there's Mike Rogeria, who don't really want that. All he wants is somebody quiet sitting next to him just to be right there. Yeah, yeah. He didn't like that at all, did he? 
No, he wasn't. He wasn't that. He was internally motivated on that. Yeah. He just wanted somebody who's more introverted. He's another like yeah. a monster of a guy too. Oh, oh he was strong. I watched mm-hmm. him box squat in just a loose pair of briefs, nine ninety five, and the bar popped off his back at the top. That's how fast it was. That was, yeah, was that was strong. probably the most impressive gym lift I think I've seen. But I'd imagine like there's so many of these impressive feats of strength that done anywhere else. The whole world would have stopped, but in Westside, it was just a. Common. It was just another day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can remember a Monday. We was was pulling a deadlift or something, and somebody in the morning crew had pulled eight, eight hundred, eight oh five or something. So, I'm out, and <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm telling these guys, and I'm like, you know, somebody pulled eight hundred this morning, and Anthony <laughs> Well, it gets these two fuckers fired up, man. They're, they're ready to go. They're like, screw it. They keep going, loading it, loading it. it keeps going up. I think it was like eight, eight hundred, eight ten. You guys both pulled it, and I think you even went a little higher. Probably just, just to. I think you even one of you guys pulled something and said, "Fuck the morning crew" or something <laughs> like that when you pulled it. So you know, it was one of those things to throw back at there, and you know, you got Gritter there. He's yeah. all fired up because one of his boys took out someone. Which it was just one of those. It was a fun thing. It wasn't yeah. like an actual like you know. But it was more. But that Monday, I just remember things went from just like, "Hey, we're just going to pull a deadlift, maybe an opener or something." Somebody maybe was getting ready for something, and then it turned into, you know, we heard. I think Lou was over here going, "You know, he always come in here." You saw something now pulled an easy eight hundred yeah, today. So yeah. you know, they got these two fired up. You know, and next yeah. thing I know, we're, they're they're pulling over eight hundred pounds, and uh, yeah, that's just that Lou would do that. He'd just come in. Yeah, you know what my guys do? Yeah, my guys What's this more- morning they did this and this and this, and you know. You know, so then he'd come in and get these, these guys all fired up, you yeah, know. Grit would be fire. He'd be going. No, yeah, Grit would, would he'd get in grits here, and then Grit would yeah. start busting on us, you know. You can't let them embarrass us, you know, morning <laughs> crew, you know. So, um, uh, what was it like been around Gritter and Bob Cole? Because they seem very different personalities. I'd say I was really, I was, out of anybody, you know, besides Josh and Joey, I'd say Grit, I was really close with Grit. He was one. He was like kind of the second Lou. I don't know, yeah. I guess. And he was the always one of the one I kind of wanted to, you know, impress or, you know, make proud or whatever. Absolutely. So I, I'd say I was pretty close to Gritter. Yeah. Both always of them. wanted to be, have him around when I was, you know, um, lifting at the meets and stuff like that. I remember my last meet, I had my one and only chance to get my name on the board. And you know, I was like, where's Grit? Where's Grit? You know, I had to have him there and missed it, unfortunately. But. Yeah, he was. I was definitely. Was that for grit. total? Not at ten eight. I was trying to get a take oh, down Mike Brown's three hundred eight. Yeah, grit was a. Uh, he was a big influence for us. For, for us, I mean, Bob was a big influence on me. Yeah. Um, but the gritter, he was. He was there right too for the from that the, that from that crew. Um, they just. Yeah, they 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 gave the they were like the godfather of us. You know. Yeah. I learned a lot, but they were always one kind of looking over us. I mean, Lou always did. Yeah. Lou always, you know, he was always yeah. would lock over, but uh, he would just come in and rattle something. Lou would be like, eh, you know, like I said, so we did this this morning, you know, so Gris like, fuck that, man, we're doing it too. You know, and and just just the, that was just a rivalry. I mean, that's all it was. It was a fun rivalry. It wasn't like, you know, a hatred, I think, but it was fun. I mean, that that. You know who Lou enjoyed being around with the stories. And Gritter and your guys' crew made us so much fun, like, Getting death threats was the funniest thing in the world for him from Gritter. Like when they had a fax machine faxing over stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, like that. But there's a reason why Louis keeps telling these stories. And um, that was a big thing because Louis needed his fun and games too. Because the morning crew was serious enough, but the evening crew are going over to you guys just to talk shit. That mm-hmm. kind of took the edge off for him in a way. Yeah. I mean, well, we t- I mean, we, wanted, we didn't want to lose to the morning crew yeah. at all. Yeah. You know? Man, but. And I didn't stay. I mean, I, I switched over to squat on Friday, so I got to know a lot of guys early, like from Friday from Friday morning, because I started squatting on Fridays at Denver's yeah. pretty early on when I was there, and it was just so I knew. You know, it was kind of a mix for me, but I was, you know, when I first started, you know, it was always, you know, I didn't want to, you know, it was always anybody from the night crew. That's like my main clique of guys. That's who I was, you know, brought in with. So it was. You know, I would migrate to that more, but you know, like Chuck and those guys, I mean, you're always going to help them. You know, yeah. it's just because oh, yeah. the, you know, it was the, fun, it was the, I wouldn't say, I, I don't know if it was really any more intense 
then Monday to, you know, like night to morning. But it was just the, the people, I think they were more seasoned. So yeah. they had been here longer and they were more veteran to it. So it was the seriousness there. Like you, you couldn't really, you, like jo you can't really joke with Chuck. You know, it's not like, you know, these guys, you could mess around. You know, I'm not a good shit talker. I'm absolutely horrible at it. Yeah. I get mad too easy and I I don't talk shit well. So it's not, it's not good for me <laughs> to even try. So, you know, him, Josh. Oh, he's the master. He is like the master. He's the king of it. And, <laughs> and then you get him. He can run his mouth really good. Yeah, he can. I mean, Tim, you never really was a shit talker too much, was you? Not, not too often. But Zach, man, he. I remember a couple Wednesday nights at the and at the gym, man, when we when he they first started. I'm like, I'm gonna kill this fucking. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. I was ready to kill him one night. Yeah. That, that Monday, I was gonna kill you. I was gonna take you out. He wasn't shut the fuck up. He just kept running his mouth at me, just running, running. I said, boy, I'm gonna tell you one more time, man. You gotta. Knock it off, man. He just I remember said, this. Remember, he okay. did this. Yeah, he did this number where he liked that, and I'm like, "Fuck you, man. You disrespected me now." So you know, went over there and it was a little. We had a little, but hell, I think we got closer after that. I mean, uh, it was in one little incident, and uh, it's kind of like re resetting everything back in order. Like, hey, man, you know, I might be the older guy here, but you ain't gonna disrespect me, you know. And, Josh has uh, always been like big brother to me, you know. Yeah. So I kind of looked up to Josh. I was kind of like, you mother, you know, you <laughs> talking shit, man. I ain't <laughs> dealing with that shit. And Lou loved it. Yeah. You know, you know, but Lou, that was, he, that, he loved that part, man, because he's just like, ah, yeah, that's why I like, you know, I'm thinking, I feel, I'm kind of, once everything comes down, I'm like, I feel like shit, man. Kind of, you know, just, you know, smack He looks at me, he goes, why'd you let me hit him? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't get out of that chair. Fight. I was trying to, I was sitting and leaned on the bench because we were pulling. We were pulling on like a deficit deadlift that day. I remember it. And mm -hmm. Eskel, well, Eskel was the one that got it started, though. Is that who he was? He was firing, he was throwing the fuel, and then he just took the bait and went with it. And then he, <laughs> I don't know, was, we must have been training for something. Had to be something. Because it was like, it was a serious, was a very like, intense. you know, we were getting after it pretty good. Because I remember. And when I said, get, I said, won't you just guys just get after and get it over with? I meant deadlifting. I didn't mean like actually go to blows. Um, and Gritter's like, and Gritter kind of freaked out there for a second. <laughs> oh shit! I just remember hearing that. <laughs> He's tripping over something trying to get to us, and I'm like, dude, I'm good, man. I just yeah, walked Joey away. jumped in pretty quick. Was probably good because I probably got killed. But <laughs> I just kind of like, hey man, you know. Then we talked about it and got everything over, and it is what it is. You know, that was just another train day, and yeah. I think we benched that Wednesday. I think that was on Monday. Bench Josh group. hit me in Newark one Sunday morning. Punch me in the face. Yeah, that's <laughs> Jesus Christ. Never took any of that any sort of stuff like that it's real serious. I don't think you know. It was just yeah. just training and motions, and yeah. you know, we were all just tired. You know, you know. Well, training partners now they that you you can't do people like that. Yeah. They'll quit. They're done. They're out. Like you get in a you get in an argument one time with somebody. One you get in one disagreement and they'll quit. Well, you got to think, too, you guys came from an unnatural environment. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. there's nowhere else, no matter what training group you look at, there's, you can't compare them to anyone else. Like, that's a, even going through the years, like, you can see um, the first group were figuring everything out. We just had uh, Jimmy Slicer and Gary Sanger on. Mm -hmm. So, like, these are the guys that came in, like, okay. Then you move into the 1980s, 1990s, and you have Marcus and all of these guys. Oh, who yeah. Intensity went from mediocre to... Sky high was just a norm, and then like it kind of it came down towards the end. But well, you guys were right in that melting pot of you can't compare any other training group to what you guys I encountered. It. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, I loved it. That was, that was like that was me. Like that was dude. I quit playing football. That was me. I I, I love that. I love coming over here. I love that whole adrenaline rush you get. Like you're not adrenaline, but you're coming to the gym and you're like, you know, just wound for sound, man. Like just get in there and do that. Because Max F for Mondays, man, it was, you, <laughs> you either did it or you yeah. got hurt or one, you know, something, or you didn't want to look like a punk, you know. These guys, you know, I'd bleed anything. I'd do anything for these guys, you know. But damn, when I'm training, fuck them, man. It's all about <laughs> me. I, I, You know, I got my ass kicked many times. I have no yeah. problem admitting to that. But, you know, but going in there, I didn't give a, I didn't give a fuck, man. I was like, I'm getting, I'm, I'm taking them out today, and then, you know. My day was bench day, so I knew I could. Every other day, I was gonna get my ass whipped. So, you know, come Wednesdays, Mondays, and Fridays was just a shit talking day for me. You know, just come in there and run my jibs. But, you know, when we trained together, man, it was. I swear to God, I'd I'd, I'd punch one of them in the face. You know, 
And, I think uh, the drive for us, because we drive almost an hour to get up here. Yeah. And it was just like, you know, you're listening to music. Like, I would never <laughs> even like, like I rode with him. Well, Mondays, we all rode together multiple, like for yeah. almost the whole time. And we never talked on the way here. Pretty much. It was really we did, he just throws the music <laughs> yeah. in and we would just zone out and get here. And you're ready to go when you walk to the door. Yeah. I mean, it was just, so I think the build up to get here for an hour, you're, <laughs> you know, because when I very first came, the first time Don Dameron brought me up, I I didn't know what to expect. I I just seen he had told me about it out of Pirate and showed me some articles, and yeah. I didn't know anything about the place. So when I walked in, you know, I was like, I could tell as soon as I walked in the door the difference. You know, the it's just the most different. You never been in a gym like that, but I couldn't believe how big of a shithole it was. Like to be as famous as it was in these books. Like, how is it this nasty look, like dirty, and it's got, you know, uh, paneled wall. I'm like, how is this place this famous, you know? And then, but then when I came back to actually be here, I mean, I puked twice before I came up, before Josh picked me up. It was like I was getting ready to do a meet. Yeah. And I, and every Monday was like that for probably six months. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, and it felt like, and that was what, you know, you get here and you're just, and it's different. I mean, it wound for sound, man. It, it just... I can't. Luckily, I got you guys. You, you can't. You can't explain it to the normal person. Yep. You can't. I've tried to. You know, some people work out. Hey, man, what's it like up there, man? Dude, I can't. You don't. You, even if I tell you, you're not gonna. You don't yeah. understand. You physically and mentally can't understand how it was to be here. And uh, you know, I'm just lucky that I was offered the opportunity years and years ago that I was able to pass it on to some. You know, these yeah. guys and things like that. And, you know, it was just a, such a. I don't know. Wow, I mean, just it was awesome. I mean, I, you know, I love you know love these guys. I mean, I trained my ass off. We, we, you spent more time with these dudes and family and all kind of other stuff. You yeah. know, that was just the way it was. And uh, you know, and I, all the other guys I know have talked about this on the podcast prior to this. You know, it's just it's just what it was. It there was I mean, just you passed it on, and these guys were doing the same stuff. All you know, all three of them. You know, we, you know, we're, we're around each other. We trained together. We ate together. We did all that stuff. You know. And uh, I don't know how you guys feel, but I feel like any success that I ever had in this sport is, I mean, the majority is due to you guys. I mean, your training partners are everything, you know. Oh, I wouldn't have, you know, squatted it around or done teaches, whatever. It's, it's your training partner. It's all your It teaches a lot partners. of life lessons. I mean, if I'm going to push my body, man, now I'm mentally got that, got that drive in me. Mm -hmm. So anything I can set my mind to, I can reach it now. I mean, I, I, you know mentally I, you get that strong okay i mean who go, who decides at the gym like hey shit i'm gonna go bench 800 pounds but your drive is so hard and so driven that everything in life you, you know you can take on yeah. and, and we all come with bad stuff but i think just from being getting that west side mentality is you know as i kind of call it or bulldog mentality is what they told me way back in the day you just nothing was going to stop you to get there you know it didn't matter if you got injured. You know, I know these guys tore off pecs and high biceps and, you know, all these other things, you know, but you kept going. He, like, shit, I'm down for a couple of weeks. I'll be ready to roll, you know. Um, you know, tie something around it. Keep going. So, you know, if you take that to life, man, it can get you a long ways. Is there anything as a, as a group you guys are um, proud of, like, more than others? I'm proud of these three dudes because yeah. they, there's three. You know, they're all, that was all squad to Graham, you know, well before, you know, the Graham was, was what, I mean, this is yeah. back when it was the Graham, you know, these guys have, you know, I knew they had the potential. Um, I knew these two for sure. And then Zach came along and, I mean, he, he easily could have, you know, before he gave it up, could have probably squatted 1,100 or something. Oh, like yeah, he, he, he ended he up was being just, the best squatter yeah, of all he of was, us. he just had perfect tech, technique. Yeah. Um, Not to say it wasn't strong, because he – by perfect technique, but he was strong on the squat. Yeah. Like, unbelievably strong. So, you know, yeah. with these numbers these guys have done, you know, yeah, that's, made, that makes me proud. What made you so good in the squat and technique? Did you practice a lot or did you get a lot of advice or were you just naturally yeah, just, gifted? I'm just the training partners, you know, just watching me, giving me cues and gritter, you know, and just, uh, I think it was just, just natural for me. You yeah. Know? He had perfect form. He would stay straight up and down. Never got over, stayed up and down perfectly. And then we started doing, I remember changing, we're like, hey, he's not getting so much out of the band. So we took chains and we hired him, we raised him up a little higher. So it really made him stable. And and it, his squat just kept going up and up, you know. Not, uh, we have about, about 15 minutes left in right. this. Is there any 
favorite Lou stories you have you want to share? Or anything that comes to mind when you think of Lou? As Lou was older, he was still so fucking intense, man. That, I, that's the, that, I learned so much from him. I remember going to one of my first meets down at IPA Nationals. It's when he squats his 920. And I'm like, what in the fuck is he talking to? <laughs> and somebody says, it's probably the sun god or something like that. And he's just mumbling this shit. Next thing I know, he goes out there, squats it, and he comes over. I remember he grabs me, and I'm like, what the fuck, you know? He grabs me, gives me a big hug, you know? And I'm thinking, dude, you're the one that squatted it, not me. <laughs> so... I, I, I lose just until the day he died, man. I, he was just, this, like I said, I went to dinner with him about a month before he passed or maybe a couple months. And he was just this, sitting there telling stories. was just as intense yeah. as he was, you know, when he was late 40s, 50s when I first met him. So, you know, it, I, that's just something that, you know, he's one of them guys live and die that way. And I, 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 I kind of got that too. I'm kind of the same way. I, mm -hmm. I am. You know, laid back most times, but you get me around these guys and we start talking about lifting and shit like that. I start getting, you know, yeah, amped up and, and, and starts, yeah, on. it's like a, it's like a, just a, like, again, I can't, you can't explain that stuff. You can't, I can't physically or mentally tell people this stuff, but it's just something that's ingrained in you. And that, you know, Lou was, you know, he's a great mentor for all of us. Um, you know, for me and, you know, like I said, Grit and Bob, but they're just as much up there mm -hmm. on that platform for me too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Um, the wire brush beating himself in the head with oh the wire. Oh my God. Him. That was probably one of the, like, and at this point, I had been around Lou for a while, and it was just cemented a whole nother level of just like, what will this guy not do to make a deadlift? I mean, I, I don't know, like, how far do you have to push yourself? <laughs> I mean, I, I thought, honest to God, I thought he was going to clean the chalk off the bar himself and i was standing there and i told him i said look i'll get the chalk man don't worry about it. I'll, I'll clean it off that's not what i need it for and he just turned away from me like what and, I, and he stuck it in his and it's in those right there that's on the wall he yep. stuck it in the front of those yeah. and turned and walked away and i was like well whatever man i mean do your thing dude and he started doing the thing he started doing a mumble and talking to himself and then he pulls that wire brush out and i'm thinking what is he going to do with this thing? And then he just starts wailing on his head <laughs> and face with this brush. And I, 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 I wish somebody had a picture of my face. Cause it's I know here. I was just like, what? <laughs> and then he starts pulling and the blood pouring out. It was just, it was, it was crazy. Yeah, it was like nothing. All, none, when he's pulling all of a sudden, it's like, the it's Hellraiser like needles start coming out, but it's blood <laughs> pouring all the way down. His it was face. hilarious. And he left I mean, Guar, the group Guar. I don't know if anybody has seen oh, yeah. Guar. Yeah. All you gotta do is listen to them, and you'll know. Yeah, that, that's Luke. Yeah, he's a uh, he was a different breed, man. He was they broke the mold with him, man. There ain't no. Yeah, <laughs> I've never ever met another person like him. I mean, there's never. Everybody has their own thing from here, you know. Like like Chuck was the ultimate intense, you know. He was the, you know, but as intense, I think Lou was just as intense in his own way. I mean, but Chuck was just more. Um, Chuck could present it different. You know, yeah. he had his way of bringing it out and you, and you couldn't help but feel hit, you know, just joint, like just, and see, I got to train around him so early and I think that's where I picked up. I mean, Lou was my actual first training partner with him and Stafford. That was my first squat group that I trained with. So trying to, you know, now you got this guy, you know, I got, now I got to keep up with him. Are you, I mean, cause he told me, he said, you got to get my name off the board. That's what he told me. And I'm thinking at that time I hadn't even squatted 800 yet. And I was like, okay, I mean, okay, you know, I mean, whatever I got to do. I mean, I'm thinking 920. I mean, really? I mean, I mean, and then he just, but learning, because when you trained with Lou, when Lou back when I first started and he could actually train, man, he had a motor on him. He did. I mean, he, he would, did. He had, he and had if it he, he was like Chuck in a way, like where if he would smell blood in the water with you, he would murder you. Yep. Yeah. Like he would take, take you, you apart. Out. And love doing it. You got to think you guys, the way you work, contributed to the system it is now. And outside of powerlifting, look at every sport it has touched. And that all came from every generation of Westsider that's come through. Because there's, there's definitely a phase where it was maximum intensity regardless, which worked for powerlifting. But at least Louis was like, possibly you should tone this down for this demographic over here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but if you guys had toned it down, we would never have had that. Because how do you find the maximum until you guys 
very much so found above maximum, right. falling apart, breaking bones, everything, mm. which was just a normal day. And um, yeah. I think looking back, you guys can be hellishly proud of that fact yeah. that you contributed to that. And it's, it's all an experiment, right? That's all yeah. it was. So, I, mean, I just remember you know, putting them bands on and flipping the damn model at that time. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. I'm like, don't <laughs> move. Lose. Don't move. <laughs> like, oh, we need to put more, we need to put more <laughs> weight on that thing. I didn't know where the monolith was going to go. Yeah. It started moving, and he's so big and tall in there. I was like, "Is it going to land on top of him? Is it yeah, going to?" I'm like, like bleep, and we're like, "Shit!" I didn't know how. I mean, how do you grab a? We need to put more on. I, mean, it. I don't even know how much a monolith weighs, but uh, a lot. Anyway, too much for me to catch. <laughs> yeah, twelve fifty. Yeah. Is uh, that what it is? Usually, yeah. I mean, it's just insane. I was like, uh, uh, "I'm out." Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't think. You know, like Lou enough. Like, who would have ever thought that this stuff's going to continue to go on and on and on? Yeah, and. Uh, that, that's well, I, mean, I tore a peck awesome. training for a meet the one time, and, and all Lou said to me was, well, you need to learn to overcome adversity. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. That's what he told me. I'm yeah. like, I, I'm, I got a bruise. Today. I don't know where, how do I, you know, and I got so <laughs> mad. I tried to squat that night. I mean, I'm in there. I tore it on a Wednesday and tried to squat on a Friday, and I'm taking a bar out, and my arm is turning. I can't hold it down, and it's just. And finally, you know, Hoff, you know, he's like, dude, you just got to chill out, man. <laughs> Who did the same thing to me? Like, the next, it was a Sunday, I tore my pack, I think. And Wednesday, I was taking a weight and a shirt to see what I could still do because the meat was like three weeks away. Yep. And I still did that meat. I bombed out horribly, though, on the squat. <laughs> it's just like, the way it was. Couldn't I get remember, my arm under the bar. I tore my bicep, and Lou's like, you're not done working out today. Okay. I went over and did lats, and I remember just. With ice, know, bag of ice. I bag of ice. On, with yeah. a, He's like, I got my ice it, and you can do lats. But that's, what, that's what you did. I mean, <laughs> Like, Chuck would have this way of looking at you to let you know if you were hurt or not. <laughs> like if it was, if like if something happened and you knew you were jacked, like you knew something was bad, wrong, and you and you're look and you're like, you can't go, you don't look at Chuck for like it, you know, because he'd be like, yeah, you're all right. Yeah, your yeah. bone might be sticking out of your leg, but you can still train your neck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I tore all my cow, my whole palm of my hand off one morning, doing a pin pull with Chuck before we squatted. He was on this pin pull kick. And I mean, I ripped everything out of my hand and he goes in the office and the only thing he could find was a box knife that they used to cut the carpet on the platform. And I, he's like, here, you got to cut those off and get those taped up. I'm like, so I'm trying, I'm like, well, Chuck, I can't get them. I can't do two things at once. So he, on the reverse hyper, it was right by the window of the office right there. He was holding my skin and chopping it off with a dirty ass box knife. There's no, there's nothing here to like put on it. And then he just... Uh, put a paper towel and duct tape my hand and I still had to squat. That's just... You know, and it was yeah. like, I never even questioned it. I never even questioned the fact that he's putting a dirty, yeah. the nastiest knife I've ever seen through my skin and an open wound. It was like... <laughs> well, he was just providing a solution to a problem. And yeah, it was like, <laughs> get it on. Let's, you know, we still got to squat. That's what he said. Yeah. You know, and it, it's funny. I, like, it's... Like, my thing with my kids is always just rub dirt on it. You better. Yeah. Just you know, that's, that's what I talked about last time. Hardcore was normal for us. Yeah. I mean, everybody thinks it's hardcore. No, it's just normal. That's just normal. Yeah, that's what you do. Just well, and all these people now, and like you see all this internet crap, all these Facebook and Instagram people and all these things, they're all about how intense they are, but it's so fake. Yeah. yeah. And two, I said, you guys can't compare it to anything. No. Because you had a, this just a whole different time, no, different is. age. Yeah, and like I'm watching your podcast the last time, and Marcus, that guy, I mean, I literally could feel the intensity. Yeah. Watching when he would start to work up, you could, like watching it on a YouTube thing. I'm like, holy crap, this dude's intense. Yeah. But then yeah. you see all these guys that talk about how intense they are. I'm like, dude, you ain't got it. Yeah. You know I mean, come on, so, you're fake yeah. as fuck. Well, to wrap it up, do you have any concluding remarks? Anything you want to talk about? Hopefully, this is the first of many. So, and I, like I said. I'm glad I brought these guys up here. I, I don't think I made a mistake whatsoever. Um, and, you know, proud of what they did. And, you know, they made me proud. So, you know, and uh, I know Grit that spoke highly of all, of all three of them. So, you know, and, and Bob too. And, you know, it, 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 that, that getting that, getting those compliments means more to me than really anything else you know honestly the respect thing and i i know these guys are the same way it's all about respect mm -hmm. and uh respect is a huge thing and where you know where i'm from and the way life is uh, respect because yeah. 
You can't buy it. I can't go to the store and buy it. I can't go buy balls at a store. You, you just earn that stuff. So. You find them in your gym bag in the closet. That is true. <laughs> That's where mine is. And once I found out, I came back out. <laughs> like, I, I'm just glad I stayed as close with Lou as I did. Like, I didn't never lose touch with him. You know, yep. I didn't come up as much as I would like to have, but I could always, you know, anytime I'd see him, it was like I knew that I was still, you know, a part of Westside. You yep. know, I was never not like, and he told me once, he said, once you're really West Side, you're always West Side. Yeah. And he told me that. And I thought, well, I mean, to a point you probably are, but now I know what he means. Yeah. You know, it's like, you really are. Yeah. I mean, this place, it, it gets in your blood and that's it, you know, and that's how it works. And I'm glad I stayed, you know, where I could talk to him and see him and be, you know, like, I don't know if Lou really respects anybody ever, you know, he, he he had his way of respecting you, but you know, he didn't really, I don't know how he would, how you'd put it with him. He was like a, he was different. Like he didn't have like, he wasn't like your buddy, you know, he wasn't ever going to be your friend, but he was, I guess not be your friend, but respect you in a, in an aspect. And I think I always kept that with him. So I felt like that was my achievement, you know, staying, you know, getting on the board and stuff obviously was the ultimate goal when I yeah. came here, but and then meeting people, like I said, you know, I mean, you get guys that you meet and you hang out with and then you, you know, like, I, I mean, I haven't seen you in a while and I haven't, I mean, but it's just, when you do see them, it's like, it's, it's not even, a, you know, awkward. There's no awkward. It's just like, oh, yeah, hey, what's up? You know, it's like <laughs> right. we just hung out last weekend, but we yeah. haven't hung out in five years probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was just an honor to train here, man. And just, I got so lucky with these guys, you know, I wouldn't have achieved anything I ever did without these guys and it's like training partners get all the glory you know I just lifted the weights you know and it was Josh brought us up the right way and um, you know it was, it was awesome some of the best times of my life awesome yeah that uh, bus side was one of the most important things in my life especially starting there as a basically a child a, a big man child teenager um, it raised me into the man I am and these guys and, and Lou and Gritter and Bob and then I've struggled with it ever since I left leaving because it never goes away that that feeling of belonging there and then you know last year Lou that Iron Samurai book sent us a bunch of book and wrote us all a personal message and that was that was really uh, pretty emotional for me and then hearing about him passing like we always used to joke that the old bastard's gonna outlive all of us yeah and uh, I think we actually believed it for a long time. I really did. I yeah, know, he's never going. Yeah. And that was like the, that. since my mom passed away in 06, that was the hardest death I've dealt with. Like, yeah. So he, he meant that much to me. Yeah. Well, gents, I appreciate the time and hopefully we can get back here again. Sounds good.